Good evening and welcome to our first recorded um, 6.30 service here at Emmanuel because of the second lockdown which started um, on Thursday the 5th of November. We're going to be recording an evening service for the foreseeable future until we're allowed to meet again in public. Two things to say before we begin. The first is we have restarted our private prayer. So the church will be open on a Thursday at 9.45 to 10.45, on a Sunday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning, and in the evening from half past six to half past seven. So please do come along to all, some, or part of those prayer times. Also, just to remind you uh, that Steve Harvey um, has been seconded by the Bishop of Leicester to St. David Broom Lees, St. David's Broom Lees, um, and please do pray for uh, Steve, Angie, and the family as they focus their ministry on Broom Lees for the next six months. It's also great to be co-leading this evening with Charlotte. And so we had a quick chat as to what we might talk about this evening. And so I thought we'd just look at, as we're going to be moving uh, more towards Zoom over the next four weeks, what are our favorite Zoom moments? So Charlotte, what is your favorite Zoom moment? Um, well, quite early on when everyone was really keen about Zoom, um, my friends started messaging saying, let's have a quiz night every night of lockdown, which lasted a good 10 days. Um, but after that, we moved on to uh, doing silly video tasks, which we did in our own time and then showed each other. So my favorite Zoom moments were probably talking about reflecting on those uh, ridiculous videos that we made. What about you, Michael? But me, well, I, I've got lots of vague highlights of Zoom, um, mainly people being on mute and them talking on mute and me shouting back at them that they're on mute. But also I've discovered too that I leave, leave myself on mute too sometimes, so I fall into the same uh, sin of being on mute. Um, there have been various animals, cats that have walked in front of the camera just as you're trying to say something very important. Or as you're speaking, a, a, a police car goes past your house, sirens blasting out, and it kind of interrupts the mood, shall we say. So those are some of my favorite Zoom highlights, mm. I think. I managed to follow the wrong Zoom link once. So I was looking, it was a work meeting, and I was trying to get to one meeting, but I actually ended up in like the whole board meeting with all the trustees. Um, and, it just, and they were kind of meeting with one of those big screens. So I just pop up on the screen for about two seconds, look around and go, <gasps> and then just leave as quickly as possible. But um, no one's actually spoken to me about it, so hopefully not too many people noticed. You've still got a job. I still have a job. Yeah. Excellent, okay. good. Yeah, there have been several times when I've tried to set up um, uh, Zoom meetings, and um, I found myself in, in one meeting, and the rest of the group were in another meeting. Um, and so there was, a, there was a point where we were busily texting each other to see we'll find out who was in the right meeting. So we eventually came together um, as a home group to um, finish the evening off, or even to start the evening is a probably better way mm -hmm. of putting it. Excellent. So I do hope you enjoy Zoom um, for the next three or four weeks or so, and hopefully by the 2nd of December, we'll, we'll have at least moved out of lockdown and, and back into the tier system. We're going to um, continue our worship now uh, with an acclamation. So let's just pause in the presence of Almighty God and remember that he's with us, he is with us here now by the power of his Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Even the darkness is not dark for you, and the night shines like the day. Let your light scatter the darkness and fill your church with your glory. If you're able to, where you are, will you please stand, and we're going to sing our first song now.
every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise who can stop the lord almighty our god is a lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him up the gate, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. From you are all things, to you are all things. 
Well, we're continuing in our series of interviewing uh, people from our congregation who you might want to not know or might want to know a little bit better or do really important jobs that are often behind the scenes. And today we're interviewing Andrew and Karen, who've been members of the congregation for quite some time. And welcome. Thank you for being interviewed. And, uh, and first of all, tell us a little bit about yourselves. OK, so I'll start. I am Karen. And um, we... Uh, this is Andrew, <laughs> but I'll let him introduce himself. We've got two sons, we live in Quorn. we've been down here, obviously not, we're not from here, 
Um, moved down here about almost 20 years ago now. I've been coming to Emmanuel around about 10 years, I think, now. And um, yeah, and I work as an accountant in the finance department at a, a rail manufacturing company over in Derby. Mm. Andrew. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I'm a scientist in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, I, because I consult with different companies in various locations, um, I, I move around a bit, but I also do quite a lot of work based from home. Mm, indeed. So, and how do you just tell us a little bit about um, um, how do you serve at Emmanuel? What, what do you do at Emmanuel? So I um, help some Sunday mornings with the junior church in the group over in the hall. Uh, but the main thing I do is I'm treasurer. So that is what, yeah, that's my main way of serving, I think. And quite a big and responsible job at the moment. <laughs> yes, it, yes, definitely. It's not um, getting less work at the moment, so. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And Andrew, what, what's, how do you help out? So I'm part of the team of assistant wardens, so that, that's the main thing I do and uh, occasionally help with stewarding at uh, weddings and things like that. I have to say both of you in your, in your two roles come across as being quite unflappable, which I think is quite a good, um, a good quality to have, whether there's you're like a swan and the legs are sort of, you know, really going underneath to just to keep yourself going. I'm not quite sure, but you do seem, uh, the, both of you seem quite unflappable, which I think is good. Yeah. We get a comment. Think, um, it's a good front then. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Very good. So tell us, how did, how did, how did COVID affect you both in terms of work and home and all, all the rest of it? What's the, what are the changes been since March? So I would say it's, it's not been too bad for me, actually. Um, it's I've been working from home, obviously, so that's stopped me needing to commute over to Derby and back every day. So that's been nice. It was nice to have um, both the boys around more than usual and actually to be around for them during the day, which I'm usually not. Um, and yeah, working from home has been all right. Got used to Zoom and Teams and everything now. Um, and we've enjoyed being able to get out for a walk sometimes for a quick walk round at lunchtime and then out in the evening. So I think I, I have to say I haven't got too many complaints about it from my end. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew? Um, yeah, so uh, when I've been working at home, norm normally it would have was just me, but um, then you went up to having three other people knocking about the home. So well, once we got the various uh, desks and IT sorted out and everybody spread to different parts of the house. Um, it, it's been worked, worked out well. Um, and I, th I think uh, uh, for both of us, although it's been, uh, we've gone through quite a lot of busy periods, I think we've both been very grateful that um, work has been busy and that, and that you know, we, we know obviously some people um, have not had that and and the consequences mm -hmm. of that so we are grateful for for the, the, the our work jobs have kept going really yeah good so no real huge significant changes for you or, or have there not significantly that way mm -hmm. my work's changed a bit we did we had people on furlough and then some we did have some redundancies so the roles i've been doing have changed throughout um so that's been the biggest change is picking up new things, I suppose, and, mm. you know, trying to learn how to do them when you're doing it over the internet rather than face to face. Mm. That kind of mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, the excitement of Zoom and Teams and things, <laughs> we do love them. Yeah. And, and also just say, I mean, I mean have you, how long have you, been, have you been Christians for? Oh, since I became a Christian when I was a teenager at a script union camp. So quite, quite some time. Yeah. You don't have to reveal how long, honestly, you don't. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Now, and I, I'm the same, um, but it wasn't at the same scripture union camp. But, um, but yeah, but it, it, since, since um, about 13, I think it was. 
And and obviously that faith has continued um, throughout your lives. And and has has have the recent months affected your faith in any way? And 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 if so, how? Um, I think it's I've been able to find a bit more time to uh, spend with God, and I've I've read quite a few more Christian books than I normally would do. I think with the library being closed at the start, I ran out of books, and so I went to the ones in their bookcase that I've been meaning to read for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and and did read them and um yeah there have been quite a few kind of inspiring books that i've read um we i read the crazy love book that with um steve harvey with the book group over the summer that was a good one um so so yeah it's given me a bit more time i think to think about god and spend with him and try and uh, not be something that i'd maybe um have a quiet time in the morning and then kind of get on my life and forget about mm. things during mm. the okay so it's really in in some ways it's really enriched your your, your yeah, christian life so, yeah. yeah good and andrew any any thoughts from you um kind of similar to karen although i'm a lot slower reader <laughs> but um we, i mean one one book um that we've both read was dirty glory um oh, yeah. and we we both really enjoyed that um and that inspired us to go on to the 24-7 prayer course that Emmanuel ran uh, that ju just finished quite recently. And we, we've really enjoyed that. We got to learn uh, uh, more about prayer, but also uh, through that to learn uh, with other people from Emmanuel that we hadn't really known that well. And um, so it's good to get to know more of our church family. And, and what was the one thing that you took out of the course? I mean, I, either of you can obviously answer that. The, the highlight from the course. Well, I'll go first. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> since Karen Don't you just silence. <laughs> but but I, I, think, I think the biggest thing was the different styles of prayer. And, uh, how, what, you know, there's, there's, and th it's okay to use different methods at different times and um i think I, th I think the illustrations that they gave through the video clips were really helpful as well mm. karen anything from you yeah i thought it was um it was it, there was a lot about how do you um focus on on god to to be able to pray to and make it a two-way conversation and there was a picture about how a speedboat can go across the water and it can be all calm and then the speedboat goes past and it goes all waves but then if you just leave it a few minutes it all calms back down again and I thought that was um that helped me think if you can't get it get calm straight away then just give it a bit more time and it will you will mm. get there in the end kind of thing mm. brilliant so is there anything we can pray for you about um I think for me, just trying to get um, the balance right between working and not working and family and it's with working at home, it's easy to just keep working all the time because there's always stuff to do, isn't there? Um, so just to, to be able to get that balance right would be good. Andrew? Um, I think that, you know, we we'll stick to the path that God's uh, God wants us to travel, um, no matter what the bends in the road or the bumps in the road that, that we'll encounter, but that we'll, we'll stay focused on him. Great. Thank you. Well, shall we pray? Yeah. Yeah. Father, I want to thank you for um, Karen and Andrew. Thank you, Lord, once again for your love for them and their love for you. Lord, I thank you that they want to grow and deepen um, in that relationship with you. I pray, Lord, um, that they will continue to stick um, on the road know that they're um, secure and firm in Christ but I pray that that whatever is thrown at them and whatever is thrown at us that they will stand firm in you and keep their eyes fixed on you the author and perfecter um, of our faith pray for Karen too with all the different responsibilities that she has with respect to work and, and home and, and all sorts of other things but I just pray that she'll get the right balance and right perspective and that as there is a more things Always more things to do, Lord. I pray she'll know where to draw the lines and the boundaries. 
Lord, I pray that you continue to encourage um, Andrew and Karen and also Murray and Fraser at this time, that they'll know your peace and protection surrounding them throughout the household. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate that and um, look forward to um, meeting up at some point in the future, yeah. hopefully in four weeks' time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. We're now going to have a time of prayer and I'm going to begin by praying for the church. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we thank you for your church. Your church united in Jesus Christ, both here at Emmanuel, throughout our town of Loughborough, through your nation and throughout your world. Lord, we, we pray that you continue to bless your church and that it will stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as the pandemic um, goes on and continues, we pray that you will speak your message of love, reconciliation and redemption into our broken and hurting world. Give us the courage, Lord, to proclaim your gospel in season and out of season, in word and in deed at these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we bring before you our world, our world which is in such a difficult situation with coronavirus. And God, we pray that you would be with scientists working towards a vaccine, um, be with governments as they try and deal with this. And we particularly pray for countries who struggle um, with poverty, who, for, for whom this is an extra burden on top of things like war and economic troubles. God, we pray that you would bring breakthrough and that you would use your church to be a beacon of hope across the world. We also pray for aid agencies at this time who are responding um, not only to the coronavirus, but to natural disasters. Um, we pray particularly for Yemen at this time, God. We pray that you would be with those who are trying to bring peace there. And we pray for those who are trying to get aid in. Father God, we pray that your world would look to you for hope in these situations. Amen. Amen. And loving Father, we pray for our local community here, for our town of Loughborough. We pray for each person here as we try and go about our daily business during this lockdown. Lord, we pray for all those who are fearful about the future fearful for their jobs, fearful for their family, fearful for their friends, and fearful for their health. Lord, we pray that your perfect love will cast out all fear. And we also pray for our MP, Jane Hunt, as she represents uh, Loughborough in Parliament. Lord, we pray that you'll bless her and be with her, and that you will give her your wisdom and your insight to represent as well, and to ask the right questions of government at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we bring before you the people we know who are sick. God, we thank you that you're a God who has the power to heal. We thank you that um, you hate sickness and we ask that you would heal those we know who are struggling, whether that be with physical health or mental health at this time. In a moment of quiet, we just bring before you um, ourselves or anyone who we know closely who needs to know your healing power at this time. In your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. And we're going to close our prayers now by, by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, be done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today, today our, our daily, daily bread. bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old selves with these practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Well, we're continuing in our series on Colossians, and today we've reached Colossians chapter 3 and looking at verses 1 to 11, where we're setting our minds and our hearts on Christ. But first, shall we pray? Oh, Father, we just thank you so much um, that we can listen to your word. Pray that you will speak to us now by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I think it's really important often to start with the end in mind. And starting with the end in mind often gives the the impetus and the inspiration to keep on going. A run, a walk, a career, a relationship, an ambition, whatever it might be. Focus on the end in mind. And that too might help us as we go uh, through lockdown. On Thursday, we entered into another lockdown for four weeks. For some, this will be very tolerable. For others, it will be intolerable. It could increase anxiety, uncertainty, especially about the future. You might be thinking, how am I going to get through this? And maybe what we can hold on to in these times is focusing on the end point, which at least for this lockdown should be the 2nd of December, all things being equal, of course. Now this passage marks a turning point in Colossians. For the first two chapters, Paul has outlined the doctrinal basis for our faith. Essentially, that we are in Christ. Christ is adequate, Christ is sufficient, Christ is supreme, Christ is all in all. We, as Christians, have died with Christ, been buried with Christ, and have been raised with Christ. And now for the rest of Colossians, Paul focuses on the so what. The what does this mean? What does this mean for all of us? How do we behave? And Paul really is putting an important principle in place, both in Colossians as well as the rest of his letters. Doctrine comes first, behavior flows out of that. Doctrine followed by behavior. Belief followed by behavior. It's really important that we understand what we believe before we behave. Behavior does not come before belief and does not drive belief. However, having said that, in many ways as we approach this passage today, there might be a tension within each one of us because there's paradox in what Paul is saying. The first two chapters are the indicative. You are. You are in Christ. 
The second two chapters are the ought. They are the imperative. But the tension within us, the paradox within us, is that we are in Christ, and yet we do not behave as though we are in Christ. And Paul, in a sense, talks, about, talks in contradictory language. We have died, yet we are still to put to death. We are raised, yet we are still to set our minds and our hearts on things above. Later on, in chapter 3, he takes a, talks about taking off old clothes and putting on new clothes. There's a provisionality in what Paul is saying. We have status in Christ, yet we still need to become someone who is completely in Christ. And each one of us should feel the tension of that within us, of what we are and what we can be and what we could be. Well, how do we negotiate this tension? Well, in many ways, as I said at the beginning of the sermon, we need to start with the end in mind. Or another word might be focus. Again, chapter 3 and verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Since we have been raised with Christ, we we'll set our hearts on things above. To set means to seek, to seek out, to examine something, to search out something. The, the, actually, what we're seeking and searching is not precisely identified. However, the call is to fix our minds on things above, where Christ dwells. Fix our minds on the eternal and not the temporary. Fix our minds on the kingdom of God and the king. I was struck, or I'm continually, continually struck, by how much we focus on the immediate and not the long term or the big picture. As I was writing this sermon, I was in danger of being caught up in the drama of the US presidential elections. I was, follow, I, was, I was following it a bit on Twitter and following every nuance and change in the narrative and the story. Every vote from every county, was, it felt like, was being deeply analyzed for the consequences, what it was telling us. And as I was sitting there trying to write my sermon, I began thinking, well, Trump was going to win. I was going to sneak it. And then I began to think, no, 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 Biden, he was going to sneak it. He was going to win. Then it looked like Biden was going to win by quite a long way. And then, of course, there were the legal challenges that were coming in about stopping the count and not counting some votes and all those kind of things. And as I began to mull over all these things that were going on and as the drama was being played out, my head began to hurt as I couldn't predict who was going to win. I was also reflecting that I was quite grateful for the, the simplicity of our electoral system, even with all its imperfections. But it also reminded me once again that it, it's easy to look at the immediate and draw out the consequences of that as opposed to focusing on the big picture. What I also had to remind myself was that whoever won the U.S. election would only be in power for another four years. In four years' time in the U.S., there'd be another opportunity for, to vote for a new president, whoever got in. And our culture is a bit like the 18-year-old X-Factor candidate who thinks the end of the world has come if they, haven't, if they don't make the final and they don't win. Someone says that is their one opportunity, which of course it isn't. We focus on the immediate and not the long term. And that is not simply, a, and, and for us, it's not simply a future focus. It's a focus on the kingdom of God. We pray that, that he will initiate on heaven as it is on earth. So our priority overall as Christians is to focus on Christ, the beginning, the middle, and the end, and try and honor Christ in all that we do to live a life for his kingdom and to see the much bigger picture. Now, of course, that's not easy because we're living with the paradox of who we are in Christ and what, we, what we're becoming in him. But we need to learn to live with the tension in our lives. So let's focus on Christ and his kingdom as well as live with the tension of the now and the not yet. Have a bigger perspective. But then how are we to behave as Christians? Well, 
I think Paul sums it up in three words in verse 5. Put to death. Put to death. And the first area that we are encouraged to put to death is in the area of sexual sin, which is covered by the first word porneia, which is translated as sexual immorality. Porneia includes sex outside marriage and all kinds of unlawful sexual behavior, including prostitution and fornication. Put to death, Paul wrote, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Impurity is almost the same as sexual immorality. Lust is sexual passion that leads to sexual sin. Evil desires is something, that is, wanted, is, is something that is wanting something that is forbidden. Greed also appears in this list, which seems an odd word to put, put into a list of sexual sins. However, it, it could be referring to sex, which it probably is. You're greedy for that and not possessions. However, technically we could apply it to both. Greed overall is an idolatry as it leads us to focus our attention on other things apart from God. One of the things that I think that we have done in our culture is to privatize sex. Or we're we concerned that the church focuses exclusive, exclusively on this subject above and beyond everything else. And as it does so, it's seen as being prudish or out of touch. However, If we look at our culture, at the mess of broken relationships within our culture, and the elevation of sex above everything else, including as we know that sex sells, it's all over our televisions, I do wonder if we have something radical and countercultural to offer to our culture in today's messed up world. Not in terms of condemnation or judgment, but simply offering a better and alternative way, offering a better story. However, as we focus on this, it's not the focus really is on other people. The focus is on us. It starts with putting to death that something inside of us, those areas that maybe we struggle with, areas that we maybe need to be accountable to somebody about and pray through with. However, it's also part of the tension that we all feel and experience between who we are in Christ and how we behave in Christ. All of us are sexual beings who experience temptation. And that can veer off into all sorts of dangerous areas, including pornography. We need to be kept to account for our temptations with with one another to those that we know and trust and love as well as focus on Christ, giving us a bigger picture perspective. I don't think we take these areas seriously enough in our lives. However, verse 6 does contain a warning about how seriously God takes them. Verse 7 also says this, You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. There's transformation that is alluded to in verse 7. So firstly, we're encouraged to put to death those areas of our lives where we're temptated, particularly in the area of sex. The second, though, is that we need to put death, the the, the area that we need to put to death are the sins of speech. Verse 8. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these... Hang on, I'll start again. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these... Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. My wife, Katrina, was talking to a close friend of ours recently, and quite a mild-mannered, if strong, person. And she was reflecting on how her language had deteriorated during lockdown, during the, during the COVID endemic or pandemic. And I guess within her, and I guess within all of us, as we go through this period, the frustration and anger can build up inside of us. And then that can overflow into our speech. I find myself getting exasperated with politicians, the media, and so-called experts in the way that things are presented to us. And here, once again, the tension comes in between who we are in Christ and how we should behave in Christ. 
and what we should become in Christ. And we're encouraged to rid ourselves of these things. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. To get rid of this is like taking off old and dirty clothes and, and as we'll discover next week, putting on new clothes. But as we know, it's not easy as changing our wardrobe. It's not as simple as that. We know, though, how language can be so destructive. Anger, rage, and malice in, in the passage are considered to be internal emotions. Slander and filthy language, more those, things, those internal emotions that come out of our mouths. But whether they're internal or external, each has an effect on us personally and also the community within the, within the church and also the wider community as well. The effects of lying with respect, to our, with respect to our integrity, of course, are obvious. Now, taking a, a slightly different view, these all might seem personal sins, but they also affect the community, both the church community as well as the wider community. And I sense that as the pandemic goes on with further restrictions, that we need to watch out for our internal responses and behavior and keep a check on where our frustrations boil over, maybe unexpectedly. Something takes you by surprise, and an outburst of anger ensues. You take it out on the person nearest to you, and often the person that is nearest and dearest to you, or the first one available. Or you suddenly become a keyboard warrior on social media, or begin to express your views on a wider stage in an unhelpful way. And when you act instinctively or aggressively, the first person that we should all address is ourselves. And ask ourselves or yourself, why? What button has this triggered within me? Also ask the question, am I being righteous or simply self-righteous? Am I I being self-seeking or indeed self-serving? deep questions that we all have to ask of each one of us. What are the things that are bubbling up inside us? What are the things that need dealing with? And why are they bubbling up inside us? What buttons are being triggered? These all sounds quite negative um, today. I think next week will be a bit more positive. And I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, well, where does this leaves us. And it leaves us with uh, at verse 11, which is a slightly strange verse, which seems to be sort of uns- inserted in. And the verse is this. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. As I said, this verse feels a little bit out of place and a bit out of context. And it's a verse that's been used recently out of context and out of place. However, what it reminds us is that in God, in God's Christ's new humanity in Christ, all distinctions and identities have gone except one. And that is our identity which is found in Jesus Christ. It's also a reminder that at the foot of the cross, we are all at ground zero. None of us, whoever we are, can claim any superiority. None of us can claim any self-righteousness. We are all in need of God's grace. We all have sinned, all have sinned, and fallen short of the glory of God. So we stand at the foot of the cross with our identity secure in Christ and in need of, and in need of his grace and his love. So let's just pause for a moment and ask ourselves the question, what has God been saying to us and how are we going to respond?
Paul wrote these words. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. But you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Set your minds and your hearts on things above. Amen. And as we reflect on what God has been saying to us and how we're going to respond, it seems appropriate that we confess our sins together. So each of us comes before God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
going to um, close our service now with a final prayer. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love, and setting us free from sin, that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day, take our lives, give us your peace, and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really do appreciate that. And we look forward to um, you joining us next week. Have a really great week. Thank you very much.